ETFs are the best way on the market to get a diversified basket of stocks without buying each of them individually. ETFs come in a variety of different forms, each tailored to different portfolio needs. One popular kind of ETF are dividend ETFs as they are a great way to get safe passive income. However, there are many dividend ETFs in the market distributed by a variety of different investment management companies. That is why in this video, I'm going to go over the top 5 dividend ETFs in my opinion that can give any investor great income for years and years to come. So let us get right into it. Before we start this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel because I will be posting dividend stock videos just like this one every few days. Number 5 on this list is a true dividend ETF, that being SPYD, the S&P 500 High Dividend ETF. This ETF is distributed by State Street Global Advisors, the same people who run the SPY ETF. SPYD is actually the highest yielding on this list by a considerable amount. Its current dividend yield is sitting at around 4.8%, which is far higher than some of the other ETFs on this list. SPYD is able to keep up their high yield by investing in solid, mature, and low-growth companies. Their top 10 biggest holdings include stocks such as Ford, AT&T, and Altria, all of which are high yielders who have lacked substantial capital appreciation in the past few years. That is why, even though it is a great yield, SPYD is only number 5 on this list. Its consistent returns and low volatility is commendable with a beta of 0.86, however the low growth is definitely a concern for people who don't need the dividend income just yet. SPYD is up just around 4% in the last 5 years, and it is still down 14% from all-time highs despite the overall market just reaching a new peak. Compare this directly to SPY itself, and as you can see, there is a clear difference that even the high dividend yield cannot make up for. Some of the stocks in this ETF have been on a downward trend in recent years and are stocks that I personally wouldn't buy myself. That being said, if you are an older investor who needs the added income and is willing to sacrifice growth for a nice yield and stability, then this ETF is actually pretty decent. The low beta of 0.86 that I mentioned earlier means that it will be less volatile than the overall market. The expense ratio is also really low, at 0.07%, which is good. The other thing that I want to mention though is that this dividend has actually had negative growth before, so unlike other ETFs such as VOO, the dividend isn't as likely to grow over time, which is another large negative. If your time horizon is shorter, this ETF is alright, and that is why I'm mentioning it, but for younger investors, I see very little reason to go long on this ETF. Moving on to number 4, we have HDV, the iShares High Dividend ETF. This ETF is distributed by BlackRock under the iShares collection, which they've owned since 2009. This ETF also has a pretty great yield, sitting currently at 3.73%. This dividend does have a slightly upward trend, however it isn't as consistent as some other ETFs, meaning they only have 2 years of consecutive dividend growth right now. They have a bit more growth than SPYD, but still not a lot, with HDV up around 17% in the past 5 years, and it being down around 5.14% since all time highs. The top 10 holdings in HDV are stocks that you are going to be familiar with. HDV invests in mature, household American brands such as Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Johnson & Johnson, and the list goes on from there. Basically every stock in the top 10, bar from IBM and Philip Morris, are staples in literally every single successful dividend ETF. However, this fund is super top heavy as you can also tell. The top 3 holdings, that being ExxonMobil, Verizon, and AbbVie make up 20% of the entire ETF. The top 10 holdings make up just about 50% of the entire ETF. This means that if you do not like the stocks that are shown on screen right now, this ETF isn't probably for you, as this is largely what you are going to be getting with it. HDV is extremely resilient despite its high weightings with its 5 year beta being only 0.67 which is really impressive. In addition, the expense ratio is also low sitting at 0.08% which means it won't cut into your growth that much. Generally, I like this ETF better than SPYD as I think its holdings are good but its high stock concentration, low dividend growth, and low capital appreciation are all causes for concern in my opinion. Now we are number 3, and this ETF is VYM, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. This is the first and last Vanguard ETF on this list. This dividend ETF is pretty great for a multitude of reasons. Firstly, the starting yield is pretty good, though less than the others on this list so far, sitting at just above 3%. This is far above market average and should help buff up a portfolio's income. The dividend growth is also much better than anything we've discussed so far, as it has 13 years of consecutive growth with a 10-year dividend CAGR of 7.12%. When combined with the starting yield, this is definitely not too bad. The growth of the actual ETF is also decent, with it up around 36.3% in the last 5 years in capital appreciation alone. Although VYM has lagged behind the market, it still closely mirrors it to some extent, unlike the other two ETFs that I have already talked about. VYM has another low beta of 0.78, which is good, and an ultra low expense ratio of 0.06. The expense ratio is super low because Vanguard is a large company and can afford small fees per customer and also because VYM is passive 
responsibly managed using a full replication approach. Looking at the top 10 holdings, you can see a considerable amount of overlap with HDV. A lot of these companies are starting to look familiar. Some notable differences though are the inclusion of Home Depot, Broadcom, and JP Morgan Chase. These three stocks are great dividend growth stocks, and the inclusion of stocks such as these into VYM is one of the key reasons I believe it is better than the ETFs we've talked about so far. Another reason this ETF is good in my opinion is because it has more holdings that make up a smaller part of the portfolio. The top 10 holdings make up around 25% of the ETF, which is around half of what HDVs is. Overall, the diversification, the growth, and good starting yield is what make this ETF attractive. Number two on this list is DGRO, the iShares Dividend Growth ETF. This fantastic growth dividend ETF can be considered the best on the entire market by some as it combines great growth companies with a good starting yield. The starting yield of this ETF is 2.39%, which is decently above market average, and the five-year growth rate of this dividend is sitting at over 10%, with it trending upwards, which is really great. The ETF is just about to hit its ninth consecutive year of growth and dividend payments, showing that it has been doing pretty well. In the last five years, the ETF is also up 55%, which is great as well, as it is the highest on this list in terms of capital appreciation. The beta is also less than one, which means it is less volatile, a common trend with all of these ETFs in this list. Combine this with a low expense ratio of just 0.08, and this is one of the best dividend growth ETFs on the entire market. The holdings, as shown on screen, are once again a combination of those few familiar companies. However, this time there are a few more additions that drive its growth. A high weighting of Broadcom and the inclusion of Apple and Microsoft are one of the few main reasons. With Meta just posting its first ever dividend, I would not be surprised to see that Meta would be included here at some point as well. I think this ETF is very well rounded and it is good for dividend investors of almost all ages. Whether you are younger or slightly older, the good combination of growth combined with a nice dividend makes for a potent ETF, which is why it is number two on this list. Number one on this list was always going to be the king of dividend ETFs, SCHD. This ETF is one of the best track records on the entire market. It does have a few downsides, such as heavy weighting on financials, which has caused issues in the past. However, generally speaking, this ETF is fantastic. SCHD is a starting yield of 3.5%. Combine this with a great five-year growth rate of over 13%, and this ETF has been a super useful tool for compounding wealth historically. The ETF has also grown its dividend consecutively every year since its inception, which is a great statistic to see for investors. SCHD invests in high-quality, dividend-paying U.S. companies. Their allocation is top-heavy, and they only have roughly 100 holdings. However, they have done a good job with this so far. There are a few positions in SCHD's portfolio that I am not a fan of, but generally it is pretty well-crafted. Although they aren't currently beating the stock market within the past five years, there have been many times where SCHD has outpaced the overall market, which is incredible considering its way above average dividend yield. The growth has slowed down in recent times, but the five-year growth is still at 53.5%, which is good. SCHD has a beta of 0.79, which although isn't the lowest on this list, is still a very great metric showing their resilience to downtrends. The expense ratio is also tiny, being 0.06%, which is about as good as it gets for ETFs like this. If you are a fan of mature US equities, then this ETF is the best of them all. You get good dividend growth, a good starting yield, a low beta, and decent capital appreciation all in one. SCHD may not be able to keep this track record up forever, but as it currently stands, they are, in my opinion, the best dividend ETF on the market right now. Thanks for watching this video. Do you agree with the ETFs I picked? If you do or if you don't, let me know why down below. This list does leave out a good chunk of dividend ETFs, such as DGRW and VIG, but I thought their yield was too low to truly include on this list. Anyways, I will see you all in the next video. That next video will probably be uploaded on Wednesday, as I'm going to be posting two videos a week, one every Wednesday and Saturday from now on, and maybe more if I feel like there's enough news to talk about. Thank you for your time, and goodbye.